What makes a great olive oil? So for me, freshness is, is definitely key. When you talk about health benefits and polyphenols and all the high levels of antioxidants that you want in a really healthy olive oil, something you really want to have in your as part of your healthy diet, um, you want to look for fresh oil, which means I follow the global harvest. So I'm one of those rare breeds that every quarter I travel, whether we're in the Mediterranean, which would mean Italy and Greece and Spain and Portugal, and then I travel south of the equator for their season, their fall, which is opposite of the Mediterranean in our summertime. Uh, so I'm there in Chile and Argentina, which Chile has beautiful fruit. I mean, the, the climate, the Mediterranean-like climate zone in Chile is beautiful. And then uh, my, the, I'm just home, actually. If I have bags under my eyes, you'll, you'll know why. I've got jet lag. I'm just home from Australia uh, and, uh, you know, be, hanging out with the kangaroos and the olive groves over there where they also grow wonderful olive oil so the freshness and following the seasonality um, those polyphenols and and healthy antioxidants they decline rapidly over time so about six months they start to deteriorate after the pressing so for me you know I'm on the global quest of freshness uh, which is a high quality uh, indicator uh, of course picking the fruit very green that makes a great olive oil so if an olive is green when it's harvested it will have about 10 percent yield inside the fruit 10 percent oil if you let that same olive hang on the tree until it's completely black you could get up to 30 percent olive oil so unfortunately the oil quality and the health benefits of the higher levels of oil are not there like you it's a healthy fat yes but you're not getting the antioxidants the polyphenols all the plant sterols then and, and you know all the health benefits you could be getting from a very early harvest oil so that's why kind of like the Tuscans early on were very big like people would say a Tuscan style olive oil or the olive oil from Tuscany is the best because they had a tradition in Tuscany to pick the Green, the very green fruit. They were one of the first people to do that uh, and harvest that very green, flavorful, antioxidant powerhouse. So uh, in general, I tend, uh, my palate goes toward that fresh green uh, powerhouse style of oils as you're used to, like in the trio, you know, that I send you. Yeah. So, you know, I think that's a good point. Now, sometimes in America, we see the words Nuvo Oleo or Nuvo Olive Oil. Is, is that a sign that these were picked greener? It can be a sign. Usually it's a sign of freshness, but you know I, I have some issues with that because sometimes they'll bottle it in clear bottles um, you know, to show off its fancy color, which is great if you can consume it within the first few months of harvest. But unfortunately, with these, these some olive oils, people think like unfiltered and they look for a really cloudy olive oil. And that can be good the first few months of harvest, after harvest. So first of all, always looking at harvest date. Uh, single estate farms. Um, but what happens is in an unfiltered oil, and, and if you lightly filter the oil or let it naturally settle before you bottle it, um, what can happen if there is sediment in the bottom of the bottle, that starts to ferment. So there's water in there, there's vegetable yeast, and that causes defects in the oil. So a high quality olive oil from a professional taster standpoint should have no defects in the oil to be considered extra virgin. It shouldn't be non-defective. So um, you would get those defects if the uh, if if all that was sediment was on the bottom and starting to ferment over time. But typically that is an early harvest style oil. That is a category. And you know some marketers have kind of latched on to that term. Uh, but it's not Novello uh, or Nuovo if it's nine months old and you know so you got to check your harvest date that's key i think that's a great point it's a point i i make in, in all my uh, podcasts and videos that you really need to see a harvest date on on the label and Absolutely. the other thing that i warn people is that the sell by date or use by date is uh, it's it's horrible number one Yes. Uh, I mean, tell me why that is. 
Sure, that's a super great question because really that is placed on there at the time of bottling, not the time of pressing. Especially if you're buying from one of the big bottle bottlers, which has a lot of um, where they import a lot of different oils from a lot of different countries, and you can see on there when it says like sourced from, and you see the initials of eight different countries. How much micromanagement do they really have of that product? I mean, olives, after all, are a fruit, right? So we have to think of them like fresh fruit juice. Uh, yes, it. Unfortunately, yeah, it, it's it's based on a lot of times on bottle date, not on when the fruit was harvested or it was actually pressed. So yes, uh, it, yeah, it's best to always look for harvest date. You know, dark bottle, uh, single estate, those sort of tips uh, for sure. Yeah, I've been shocked even going into gourmet grocery stores or gourmet wine shops and seeing these what appear to be you know gorgeous, expensive olive oils. And in fact, I was in one last weekend, and you know I always pick up and look on the back, <laughs> and many of these were pressed in 2015 and 2016, Whoa. and they're selling for fifty and sixty dollars a bottle. And I'm going, what the um, heck are these doing here in you know this high class store? Yeah. yeah, that that is absolutely true. And it you know, Americans have been kind of tricked into buying like fancy bottles with nice cut glass and beautiful labels. And and honestly, you know, it it's tough you know it's really tough the american the big bottlers are, are doing a better job than they were they're they're transitioning away from the clear plastic bottles and over to at least tinted glass uh, light or tinted uh, plastic the pet bottles uh, does keep some of the light out uh, fluorescent lighting in grocery stores not ideal for olive oil light destroys olive oil so um, you know the big bottlers are trying to do better uh, you know and, and and are succeeding on some fronts and and there's a place in the olive oil market for everyone whether you're the everyday consumer or if you're really focused on your health and want to use olive oil as a conduit and, and backbone to your healthy lifestyle, uh, which is where we fall. We fall in that camp. <laughs> so we want the best we can get our hands on. All right, you brought up extra virgin olive oil. Or what the heck is extra virgin? <laughs> okay, so extra virgin is the highest category of olive oil that's contained, it's produced using solely mechanical means. So that means there's no heat involved, there's no chemicals involved. It's really the highest category. So it's got to have a very low level of acidity. And acidity in olive oil is not something you can taste. So people, you know, consumers can't really identify acidity. Um, what acidity tells you. Uh, when you're doing a chemistry panel is the quality level of the fruit. So it's all about the quality level of the fruit. So uh, were they picked immediately and taken to the mill immediately or did they sit around for 48 hours? Were they really ripe fruit and they were placed in the back of a dump truck to produce bulk oil or were they placed in small crates and carried to the mill? Uh, were they left in the sun? Was there fly damage? So all these things deteriorate the fruit and will uh, raise your acidity level. So you want a very low uh, acidity level in the olive oil and to be extra virgin. And honestly, the extra virgin category is actually pretty wide. Like, um, for example, in my my oils are third party tested by a lab in Italy, uh, and the to be considered uh, extra virgin, it needs to be 0.8 percent or less of acidity. So the lower acidity, the better. So for example, I'm just pulling up a couple of my, my recent labs. Um, mine were not even at the 0.2 level. So very, you know, very, very low acidity. So that's what you wanna, you know, look for. And some bottlers will actually put that on the label if they're super quality, you know, minded. Um, and you know, look look at sources like Flo Sole, look at national competitions, look at the California uh, olive oil competition that happens at the LA County Fair. Right. Um, that Those are some good tips for identifying and, and just educating your palate and, and tasting olive oil and understanding what to look for uh, are the best things you can do. 
Yeah, I, a few years ago, I had the opportunity to, to talk with the, the Minister of Olive Oil in, in Italy, and he, oh, cool. he makes a very good point. He said, there is absolutely no proof that oleic acid, which is the monounsaturated fat, in olive oil, and right. olive oil is not just oleic acid, but it, it's the major uh, fat right. in olive oil. He says there's no proof that oleic acid is has any major benefit over over any other oil or monounsaturated fat. He said it's a carrier for the polyphenols and the antioxidants, and and he said That's we have so to understand right. that. And I I think that was a very important point. Um, there, yes. there's, there's nothing unique about this fat. Uh, right. It's what it's carrying to us. It it's a carrier, and you know when you put high quality extra virgin olive oil uh, like like my oils on food you actually uh, can your body accepts the new accepts the nutrients even even higher at a higher level um, you know if you dr drizzle it so when my wife and I my wife's a great cook in in our family and when she sets a table with salt and pepper the olive oil goes on the table at the same time because we're splashing it on the way some people would you know who we catch up we would be drizzling it on our broccoli or our green beans or or you know whatever whatever whether it's pork or whatever you know it's always drizzled with mother nature sauce right um, so for us you know we, we use it that way um, you know to to I to I guess absorb more nutrient to get uh, more nutrient value of the foods we're already eating for their health value you know uh, that's a great point and it's something I just absolutely first thing I tell my patients is yeah cook with olive oil uh, but olive oil has to come to the table and you're absolutely right it's right next to the salt and pepper and in, in any you know in any home in Italy in any trattoria in Italy they yes. bring the bottle to the table and it's That's right. it's the foods to deliver olive oil uh, absolutely and and you know I I don't decant mine into like a clear cruet where sunlight can get to it and things like that like I prefer to store it you know in the cabinet with my salt and pepper we like a really clean you know clean area more minimalist look in our home so we keep things away but when it's time to set the table it's the same as putting silverware on the table it, it comes out you know and that that's our habit so I'm not a big fan of you know clear cruets and that sort of thing for you know and buying big jugs of olive oil you know uh, oxygen uh, kills olive oil light kills olive oil and high temperature kills olive oil now the nice thing you mentioned you know cooking with olive oil and I think that's something we that's our next about. subject okay good good so go ahead you all um, right so we've actually had uh, a fat expert on our program and one of the myths that is out there that I try to spell and hopefully you'll join me on this uh, olive oil, everybody says, well, heat damages olive oil because you can't cook with it because it smokes, and that's proof that it's damaged. Olive oil has a high, a low smoke point. It starts smoking fairly early, but it turns out it is the least oxidizable oil there is. It actually oxidizes less than coconut oil, which is kind of the gold wow. standard. Wow. Um, and so, can you cook with olive oil? Absolutely. I walk into every Italian Spanish kitchen and that grandmother who's in her 90s is, you know, cooking everything, whether it's the, uh, you know, chicken parmesan or whether, you know, what, what she fries in it, she sautés in it, she roasts her peppers in it. Like there's nothing that they're not using olive oil for in the Mediterranean uh, and, and getting all the benefits of fresh oil there at least once a year. Uh, even if you were to live in Italy, you would only have access to fresh oil once a year. So um, it, you can cook with olive oil. I would say that the higher level of antioxidants in the and polyphenol level in the oil to begin with actually protects the oil when you're cooking with it. So in my home, I love fried eggs for breakfast. So Megan will make uh, some fried eggs for me and she knows to cook my eggs over and she 
she's like I said a great cook but she cooks my eggs over medium low heat and she does that in the fresh pressed olive oil and honestly I can't tell the difference between the fresh oil that was put in, was placed into the pan and what's on my plate after the fact that I you know because I we're pretty heavy users in our household like you um, taking one from your playbook and um, yeah so you know I, I you know it doesn't break down if you cook at a lower temperature and and just respect like one one tip would be, you know, don't heat the pan with the oil inside. Heat the pan on the stove, then add your oil, then add your other component. And that just keeps your oil from sitting there oxidizing and breaking down. So that's just one little, you know, takeaway tip. tip. Great tip. Yeah. All right.